When I started this YouTube channel, it was to help people learn for free uh, how to CAD model and get a job inside of the automotive design industry. And by the time I kind of, you know, opened my eyes to exactly how the system works and, and you know, how these different entities exploit, you know, the automotive workforce, it made me realize that the best way to help you know, my channel or like help, you know, my viewers is to be able to let them know and understand this world because um, it's very, it's always talked about behind closed doors because of these contract houses have so much power that any sort of outlier that talks about it or if I were to talk about it earlier in my career, it would have been very detrimental. So one of the main reasons why I sort of stopped making videos was because I wanted to make sure that my business is completely self-sufficient from uh, the automotive industry, uh, more particularly with contract houses. And now that it's been about a year, um, I'm, I'm in a position where none of their... In, they, they have no influence over me or my life to a certain point not even the automotive industry has influence over me and my life I have kind of like diversified how I make money uh, in different industries so um, even even if this video maybe gets you know I don't know burns a couple bridges it doesn't really matter to me because in the end if this helps one person either avoid these sorts of things or maybe even change careers then it's worth it to me um, so this video is going to be on how these contract houses fuck over the automotive creative workforce. And since I'm not a stupid ass, um, I will not be talking about any specifics in terms of, you know, what company or anything like that. Um, and also, uh, from what my lawyer told me, uh, just as a preface, uh, this is just all opinion. There's no matter of fact here. Uh, in fact, we could call it a story, a make-believe, if you will. Little, little story time. Um, but it's something that, that has, uh, you know, always been a part of this world, I think. And I'm pretty sure it's probably in a part of every single creative work field, you know, these contract houses that exploit talent that takes a very long time to develop. And then they use these sort of, you know, very high you know, worth or, you know, prestigious positions that many people want to do as a, as a gatekeeper. And then they use it to squeeze everything out of you. And then they use that power to basically control and manipulate the whole market. And, um, and this video is going to talk about all that. So um, it's going to be a little more one-on-one, -on -one, kind of like I'm talking here. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's something that, that it's extremely important. In my career, I've always been very blessed in the sense of um, I started working very early in my life and also I started learning 3D very early in my life. So I've always, I was always a very high value person inside of this industry. So I actually experienced the better end of it because I, I had such a huge network and, I, and so many people you know, wanted me to work for their studio. Um, and in my life, uh, people have respected me to a point where it's a little bit humbling um, because, you know, these are directors and CEOs, uh, billionaire investors, you know, they, they've always been so nice to me. They've always been so respectful. And in all of my career, you know, a decade in the automotive world, um, I was, I never felt an ounce of disrespect except when it came to contract houses and how they approached me. It's so, uh, I think about the things they've told me, you know, um, they've told me, uh, you know, if uh, they've threatened me, they've, uh, you know, belittled me, you know, it always made me very, I always wondered why, um, why they never did like an ounce of research into what they were doing. 
you know, why, why is this little recruiter thinking that he has more power over me? Like, why, like, did he not even Google what my career is? My face would come out on the, fr on the front page 30 times. You know, like, to a certain extent, if you're going to make a, an enemy, don't make it the dude that has a YouTube channel that is in every single studio and it's watched by every single school in this industry. But obviously these people don't give a fuck about any of that. And to me, they're kind of stupid in that sense. So they, they've always, not only to me, but to every person around me, have been extremely rude and extremely, you know, they show that they are the gatekeepers. Um, and to a certain extent, they are the most powerful ones in that, in this whole situation, because they control the workforce. You know, many times a director might be like, oh, you know, I, they get to choose and pick, you know, who might go in or whatever. But that's only if everything is nice and dandy and nobody is like asking for more money or, you know, trying to get what they're worth. You know, like at, at that point, yeah, you have all the control in the world. But the second uh, people like me come in, I'm very vocal with this. I'm always telling people, you know, how they're screwing each other over, you know, how, how these companies are lowering people's wages without telling us you know, the, the, the OEMs, how they're, you know, threatening us, you know, with, with, you know, losing our jobs. A lot of times they'll make you move across the country and you get there and they lower your, they lower your, your hourly rate by 10, 10, 15, 20% because they know you have no other option. You know, they know that if you get in their blacklist, then that basically eliminates your whole career. Um, and they use that. And, they'll, and they use that to squeeze every single penny off of you. Let's remember, the sole purpose of all of these companies, their sole profit, the only thing they know is how to charge the most and pay you the least. That is their whole existence. And whatever they need to do to make sure that keeps happening will keep happening. They could have a bill rate of $100 an hour and you come in asking for 75 and their answer is going to be ooh that's that's a that's a tough one that's a tough one but you know what i'm a, i'm a, i'm going to do the work for i'm a, i'm a, i'm going to see if i can get that for you for sure you know they hang up and smile if uh if if their bill rate is $100 and you come in saying oh i could do that for 40 an hour their you know their answer is ooh ooh that's a tough one that's a tough one i'll, I'll uh but i'll work on it for you you know, I'm, I'm going to do that. They're the biggest gaslighters. They are, they have no idea what they're talking about. None of them have any experience. None of them could, would even have the skill set to step foot into these design studios, yet they control the people who are in there. And it's, uh, and it's extremely frustrating. You know, um, I, I know many, and they screw over not only the worker, but also the staff, the, the, the companies, because uh, many, many people, they have non-compete clauses. They usually control the whole market. So, you know, if uh, many people like, like myself uh, either leave the industry entirely or they retire early, um, you know, they, they basically, they know that for, th for this, this certain OEM only uses this contract house and, and I'm never going to work for them again. So all of a sudden, those contract houses are like, oh, man, it's so hard to find talent. It's like, no, it's not that hard to find talent. There's qualified workers. It's that nobody wants to work for them. You know, I've had, I've had them tell me to my face, you know, um, uh, you know uh, Ray, think about this. You know, if you don't work for me, then you'll never work for this company. And that's why I remember telling them, like, yeah, you're right. I'm never going to work for this company. You know, like to a certain extent, they're correct. You know, there's nothing that that any director, any manager, or anything like that can ever do to change that, you know. Uh, they might, like, when it's kind of like whatever, you know, if it's a little bit of change here and there. But when you're someone like me or someone that, like, really is trying to kind of, like, tell them the different things they're doing, you know, try to expose them to a certain way, when, when, it actually become, when you actually become their enemy, they will get you out of there regardless. And, you know, they, in the end, What's, what's the director really going to do? You know, uh, that, that, that work contract is completely theirs. So they're, they're forced to work for them, right? Um, the reason being is that the design director, the managers, 
uh, the people who I have actually worked with, they don't have neither the knowledge nor the power to actually help you in any significant way. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, uh, one is that there's in their, in their contracts, they, they're, they're specifics into, into what they can and can't do. And, and once you hit a certain level in terms of, of like a, of management or a executive level things, they definitely train you and, and let you know. Uh, first off, you probably would never even get that information, but if you're even like a director of operations who actually knows these, one of the most important things they train you about is they go, do not talk about how much we're paying for this person. Because um, if they did, uh, you would immediately quit. You would immediately call the contract house and be like, how the fuck are you guys making more than me? How are you, how are you, you know, like, like, how are you denying my raise? How, you haven't given me a raise in six years yet, yet, you know, you've been, you've been, it's in your contract that every two years you get a jump in, in how much you're making. So, so they're very exploitative. If um, uh, in their contracts, there's, there's uh, two year clauses, right? So if, in, uh, if uh, it basically says, hey, if, if, uh, if I put someone in your company and, and they're working for you, if, if you try to hire them directly, uh, you have to pay me the money I was going to make off of them. You know, like before those were basic, that sort of finance was, you know, the, the sign up bonus. Uh, if if a, a company wants to, you know, spend the money to get you in there like that, now that the sort of the funds that were before allocated to a sign up bonus, now that's going to the contract house. And to a certain extent, if they did the training, um, you know, if, uh, if they did a pay training, you know, I, I would understand that. But none of these contract houses have any of that as an incentive because they are the gatekeepers to this extremely prestigious positions. They don't need to train anybody. You know, they, in fact, they're, they're, they're the ones making the most money out of my YouTube channel because me and Adrian's YouTube channel and others that kind of take the time to sh showcase how to do our job because they didn't really, they didn't have no reason to. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not, they don't have any risk in losing those contracts. And there's many things they do to make sure this happens, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and so since they don't do any training, and most of the time it's through the, your own personal network, uh, once you get into this, once you get into this job, then um, if, you're, if, you're a, if you're a very good employee, or let's say you're a, you're a killer, they know that, that, um, that by policy, nobody will basically hire you directly because they don't want to pay them the extra money, you know, just to hire you. So once, the, once it gets to the, close to that two years, they'll basically, they'll take you out of that company. They'll, you know, the, and, they, and then in those contracts, they, they know that whatever OEM can't talk about can't talk to you about why that that um, contract was done, and uh, and uh, and and since they know that, they'll come up to you and be like, "Oh, sorry, I guess you know, I, I don't know, they uh, uh, because of the budget, because of this, because of that, you know, they are the kings of gaslighting. They like they the way they so easily lie to your face. They'll tell you, "Oh, no, you're the you're the highest paid like here." You know, when I'm like, well, I already know this guy's money. I already know that he gets more, more than me. What are you talking about? And then they'll go, oh, no, you can't. You, you're not supposed to. No, it's, it's, you're not supposed to, you know, talk about your salary. And I go, no, uh, the California protects me from any sort of negative repercussions from talking to my coworkers about this. So I'm trying to figure out what the fuck you're talking about. So then when they know I'm kind of educated in that sense, they go, oh, uh, no, 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 never mind. You know. I've always been very business minded my whole life. Um, my my mother, my father, my mother's uh, an adoption lawyer. My dad uh, had his own business and is an architect. 
So they always had clients. They didn't really have bosses or like, you know, didn't work for a corporation or anything like that. Uh, so I was always very business minded. And, and I remember when I got into this industry, uh, I kept trying to figure out why was it always the same companies? You know, and also in my eyes, okay, so once I get enough time in here, once I understand the system, that, like I'll, I'll make a, I'll make my own, you know, I'll make a break for it. Um, and then once, once I actually got to that point, um, all of these gates started coming up. You know, they tell, there's a, I wish they were more real from the beginning, you know, but it's always, they don't really want to ever tell you the truth. You know, they'll always be like, oh, if you work for me, the, uh, you know, no, if you work, if you work in here, it, it can't be through your own company. Or if, uh, if your company doesn't have X amount of people, you know, this, uh, you know, we don't work with that. Um, I, I, I laugh about this now because now that I've been completely out of the industry, I'm, I mean, uh, completely out of the contract industry, you know, with them, uh, I actually do have OEMs that are, that work with me um, directly. I'm in their vendor list, not only the automotive industry, in, uh, in the tech industry too, some of the biggest companies I've worked for um, directly through my company. And it really, I remember one of the things that just really like popped out of me so much was that I remember before that, every single time when I was inside the contract automotive world, it, everything is impossible. Uh, no, we can't put you on the vendors. We can't do this. We can't do that. And then you get out of that and you start actually working with other companies that want to work with you. And I remember I was almost like taking like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put you in the, yeah, you're in the vendor list now. Give us a, you know, give us two, three days. This isn't rocket science. You know, it's, it's, you're just adding another company into the vendor list. But they pretend like it's the most out of control idea in the whole wide world. You know, they even get mad at you when you tell them, hey, uh, I don't, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to work for them. You know, I've had companies tell me, we'll pay you whatever you want, but you need, to, but it needs to go through this person. And I'm like, no, because that person will always have control over me. If I agree to work for that company, that means that I can't offer any service to you outside of their capacity. You know, and I'm a person that does things they can't do. You know, my parametric modeling, my uh, virtual reality, you know, programming and development. You know, they, they don't have that sort of skill set. But if I work through them, now I can't do anything with them. The same way on how they can't hire you when you're working directly. Also, once you're even fired, there's also a, a, a timeline where they can't rehire you through any other company or through yourself because they will get sued. So I was always wondering, why is it always these companies? Why? And also, why is everyone against me? Why, nobody, why doesn't anybody just want to help? You know, like, like, why are they so against entrepreneurship or like youth, you know, getting their own foot in this industry? And then that's how I found out it's a little, a little more black markety. You know, and now here's where I'm going to go into more storytelling. Let's make a, this is 100% fairy tale, right? Um, uh, but let's pretend, uh, uh, let's pretend you're a direct, actually, before I preface this, I do want to say that even though this might or might not be uh, common, um, that does not mean that it's everywhere. I definitely, um, this doesn't happen in every company. Uh, and, and so, so, um, but I think, but it's so, or maybe not so common that I feel like people who don't even know me and I don't even know them are going to be shivering a little bit in this video. Cause they're like, damn, how do you know? How do you know how the, how we do this simple ass fraud? Like the, the, like what I really hate is that they thought they were smart doing their little shit, which I'm like. Like, ain't nothing smart about what the fuck you're doing. Like, you're not a little gangster. You're a soft belly, like, old fart that can't do shit. <clears throat> so, let's pretend that uh, you're a director of operations, right? You want to make a little extra cash, 
and uh, and your homeboy has a little company, you know that that can basically be the li liaison for this, right? Uh, it's pretty easy because it's a black market, as in as in um, as in as long as the people who are control, which is basically the director of operations, uh, and the people who uh, oversee the financing. So you got to bring your little accountant under the table as well, or have him fear you to the point where he doesn't say shit. Uh, then whatever the OEM gets, uh, you know, in terms of the different proposals, it could be completely fraudulent, you know? And, and, and once they, you know, once they get approval for, for the, their little, their little friend's company, you know, because it's written specifically in the contract that a company can't talk to the workers about what they're getting paid, that means that they can basically lower the wage as much as humanly possible to make the most profit you can. And so once, uh, uh, once that profit starts kicking in, you know, you just get a little, you tell your homie to, to you know, Maybe fix your car a little bit, you know, throw you a little golf, you know, which to me was like, like, damn, you should be asking for a little more. You're making them fucking thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars down, you know. And, and you might be wondering why, you know, there's such, you know, the, the, there's plenty of reasons why that, that sort of would basically, if, being, if people would see what's going on and, they, and, and when they do get caught, guess what happens? Most of the time, the, the OEM gets so embarrassed that they don't, even, they don't even pursue anything. They just get them out of the company. They don't want to tell people, oh, yeah, this guy was siphoning off everybody, you know. To me, I also, uh, to a certain extent, the staff still, uh, you know, they still try to, like, you know, they're scared of them. They still respect him. And in my eyes, I'm like, why am I going to respect this dude? He, 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 his daughter is driving, his, his daughter's Mercedes was your early retirement, my man. They're go, they're, they're, his, his new Porsche is your raise. And, you know, there's a reason why, you know, maybe you got divorced because you didn't, you know, every single project had to go overtime. You know, it's a, uh, it's amazing how, how it, it, when there's a, a financial incentive to keep you working, by both sides, you know, your quality of life tends to degrade because there's always more to do. There's always overtime, you know, and, and, and every single, every, when they go home and pass the fuck out in their bed uh, and you're staying there until 2 a.m., you know, the, the, their bank account just gets a little bigger and bigger. So once I started sort of, or once in this fairy tale, I started realizing, you know, that even if you try to come up as a, as a normal company that doesn't want to play these games, then there's no room for you in this world, you know. And, that, and, and once I found that out, I was like, all right, cool, I get it, you know, be good, you know. And that's, why, and that's why I sort of, like, excused myself from the industry. And so um, a lot of times... Like, I, I know, I understand when, when, uh, when it's, I don't understand, actually, but when, when the industry is something that doesn't cost, you know, many people hundreds of thousands of dollars in school loans, you know, um, it's, it's very sad that in two, three years of just very specific training, like that's the worst part of the industry and that's a big part of why I stopped making alias videos because it's it's so expensive that basically only OEMs can get there. And so if you spend two years of your life, you're sort of like shoehorning yourself into an industry that's very limited. And and then and and once you even get the skill set or the opportunity or you even pass through, like it's it's crazy to me that people dream about these jobs, you know, and, and and once they actually, you know, push through, there's some, there's some, you know, dude in a desk 
just smiling away, taking all your money, who wouldn't never be able to, uh, that, whose skill set is easily replaceable. I could train someone to do what a recruiter does in less than a month, easily. It takes two years minimum to get someone kind of competent in CAD modeling. I, I know this for a fact. I did it myself. I thought I thought I was gonna I thought I was I was like, you know what, I'll start training and then I'll put him in. And through maybe ignorance of the market or you know uh stupidity, the second I did that they just snatched him from under me. And I could like and even the person didn't want to. You know, he's like, you know, like, Ray helped me. You know, like, but it's like, this industry is so closed that I knew that if I told them, hey, don't do that, come here, I'll, I'll look for another company. And I tried. You know, but they, all, they, they control everything. It's almost like a cartel. Like, there's only, like, four companies that, you know, do that. Now there's more random-ass companies coming in, but what's the point? It has nothing to do with the actual workforce. You know, it's like, uh, to... To them, you're just a commodity. You're not a person. You're just another seat in there. You know, there, there's no reason for them to try to, you know, get your raise. There's a reason why, there, one of the main reasons I left is because uh, a lot of times people used to call me the canary in the coal mine because I would leave before shit really hit the wall. Um, and that's also why I left the automotive industry. Um, because I knew that in this sort of circumstances, nobody's wage is ever going to go up. Like, and that's been, that's been the case. <clears throat> uh, my starting rate was something like 35 an hour, like in 2011 or something like that. I think that's still, like, you know, many people, I think that's what they're asking for right now. You know, and it's like, it's, to me, it's, uh, you know, there's very little companies in the world that, you know, you can work for. Um, now the rates are to the same as like nurses or, you know, real estate agents or, uh, you know, like, which to me, I don't compare any career to another career or anything like that. But one, there, it didn't take them a hundred thousand, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of school, of school debt to get, to find that skill set, which is really, you should never do that. <clears throat> but that's a whole other video. Um, but more importantly, uh, there's a church, other oh, church, there's a hospital in every town, every city, you know, um, in the automotive, there's only a handful of design studios in Southern California, you know, in a certain spot, you know, um, uh, and inside there's only a handful of, you know, uh, jobs in there. So it's like, you're taking on so much risk. And it's taking you so long to to get trained and the odds of you even getting there are so it's like it, it makes me so furious that like even if you fulfill all those odds the people who are sort of like writing your coattails and the ones that are making the money off your skill set are even are the most easily replaceable like snakes ever you know and i'm so happy now that I'm completely out of their influence, and I don't think they'll they have the pa like you know the patience to even see this video, you know, but uh, or the smarts, but um, you know I do want to sort of take the time to you know remind them you know to make make sure that you know like look I have little I have tattoos here on the side, right? I have these tattoos. You know I'm your enemy. I hate you. You should hate me too. You know because I am your biggest enemy. That's what I. The, the, I've been working as hard as I can to to fuck you over, you know. As as hard as you have tried to fuck me over, I'm trying to fuck you over now, you know, through education, through telling people how to fight against you guys, you know. <clears throat> so how do you fight against them, right? Like how do you like you know? I'm kind of like giving you these like stories and how, and honestly, to me. I, I don't, I'm not a big, mm, like, I, I don't think this will happen because that's honestly one of the main reasons why I left because 
this industry has brainwashed everybody in the automotive world. You know, that collective bargaining is the wor- like basically a union is the worst thing in the whole wide world. Like they, the anytime in life someone is very adamant to try to you know make you think about something, you'll maybe make you think that this thing is stupid or this thing is dumb. Like you know, politics do this all the time. You know, you always have to ask yourself why is this person so you know vested in me not liking a certain concept. You know, is it because maybe it will cost them a lot of money? Is it maybe because if we start doing that, it would, you know, give the workers more right? You know, because their lack of training, because they've been lazy asses sitting, just gatekeepers of these uh, companies, just waiting for people to teach themselves, to take on debt. You know, um, uh, the industry is actually very, um, even though it's really tiny, it's actually extremely difficult to find any talent right now. Anybody who has an, an idea of what they're doing and experience, most of them are working. You know, and to me, a business, business, the, the business world in general is basically war. Honestly, you know, like it's it's very uh, uh, savage. I kind of, in that sense, I kind of like it because. Um, you know, I always believe the you know the best warriors are built in fire, kind of thing, or like you know, the best warriors are made in you know during battles. You know, like when when you're really out there, when you get fired any second, you know, like I like that, yeah, right? because it really made me, you know, who I am today. You know, um, I I I I told myself my skill set was gonna make it so they can't fire me, and I could tell them where the fuck I want to tell them. Um, but the is specifically the CAD market. That is the most powerful market to me. Because, you know, a lot of guys, like let's say, for example, this, this conversation happens a lot in clay and, uh, and to a certain extent even in design too. You know, they try to say, oh, you know, what's better, CAD or, or clay? You know, uh, sketching or, you know, it's like, it's like um, I don't really give a shit about what anybody thinks. You know, it's about the process. You know, like uh, people aren't buying sketches. People aren't buying clay sculptures. If the if back in the day, before CAD, you took over the clay field, and once that happened, oh lord! Once they didn't need the clay guys, whoo! This I I definitely like. I wanted to make sure to say this. Do not if you're a student, if you're young, do not. Do not try to be a clay sculptor. Um, if you're a clay sculptor, you they they are the mo- they haven't gotten a raise in like twenty years. Um, they are treated so disrespectfully because their skill set, my skill set, at least I can go, I could go, I could do aerospace, I could work from a desk. You know, I could show you guys my skill set. You know, I could I could show you lessons. Like you know, a clay sculptor can't afford a, a full scale buck. A clay sculptor, you know, um, uh, even even if uh, uh, you know they they can't work remotely, you know, anytime there's a change in their life, they have to move. You know, they, they it sucks because I already know that if if somehow the CAD would be replaced with some other, you know, uh, workforce that could take on that sort of role, we we would get the same treatment one hundred percent. You know, but. Since CAD is so difficult, um, it's extremely valuable. The, the, the workforce doesn't get to pay for it. But in the process, it is the process. You know, um, if the CAD stops developing, then the project stops developing. And, the, and it's so difficult to even find anybody that's qualified to do this job that it basically it brings everybody to the table to negotiate, right? And that only happens through collective bargaining, through unions. I actually try to do that, you know, like on sort of like underground sort of guerrilla, right? But every person that, like, it, it almost felt like a leopard, like, like, I felt like you know, it was like, they were like, what? It, they act like a, like a person who's in an abusive relationship. Like, oh, no, I'm just glad that, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to ruffle no feathers. I don't want, no, no, no. You know, it's like, and I get it. You know, I get it. Um, 
And that's all. That's one of the biggest reasons why I was like, I need to go by my own. I can't depend on this industry because it's never going to change. There is no incentive to ever make your life better as a CAD worker individually. There will never be a better time than yesterday of in terms of pay, in terms of that. You know, uh, they will keep squeezing you until the end, basically, because it's a prestigious job that many people want to, people dream about doing this. You know, and they get there and all of a sudden they realize they're not getting paid at all. This goes the same for designers. It really it frustrates me that, you know, they pay even more for, you know, for school. And, you know, every time they're presented, they're like, oh, hey, like, you know, they wear all their designer things. They put up this little front. They're all broke. You know, I don't, and I'm not, I'm not trying to tell, like, you know, obviously there's a couple that, you know, that made good money and all that. Like, that's what, like, obviously, you know, like, I'm not trying to insult any of them or anything like that. But it's, uh, uh, they're, they're paying, they're getting in debt, uh, you know, more than basically the same as doctors. And they're making, I don't know, I don't know, 80, like 90,000 maybe if they're lucky. You know, um, when you think about how much they're paying for the school loans, it's criminal what these companies are doing, what these schools are doing too. Uh, so there's classes of 100 and like four, I think I remember reading that 140 people graduated uh, in a certain you know, school system and 10 got a job. You know, it's like, uh, you know, all these students want to be car designers, you know, uh, or want to be cat sculptors in the auto or want to be clay, uh, clay sculptors. And they'll, they'll sell you that dream. You know, like, oh, hell yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's like um, 140 a year. I don't even know that many people that work professionally. How the hell are they going to get there? What? You know, I really think it's one of those things that it's that to me seems extremely criminal too because they can't get out of these loans you know which to me is a is a result of uh you know other systems basically betraying the youth so i actually did try to form a union um uh but it didn't really go anywhere you know um and i don't know if i'll, I'll try again but just for the sake just to see if uh once people get frustrated enough, you know, that they realize that the only way to basically protect each other is through collective bargaining, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can fill out my site and um, it will always be confidential and I won't, and, and, and if it gets to enough people, um, then I'll start the vetting process to make sure they're the right people that are legit and they're not these snakes that are trying to get in and, you know, infiltrate. Um, then I'll, I'll try to help in that regard. But honestly, the, like in my eyes, I've always worked really hard to not depend on anything or any industry or anything like that. So I actually don't really think that that's going to happen. And to a certain extent, I feel like it's not my battle. Um, but I did work hard enough to be able to offer it if the industry wants it, you know, but if not, it's like anything in life, you know, people are going to treat you like how will you let them to be treated, you know, if you want to spend all this money in school, all this time training, you know, and then you get there and then, you know, these little companies are, you know, basically pimping you out, paying you the, the minimum, they have no incentive to pay you more. That's their business model. And legally speaking, it's not only it's not only um, not illegal; it's encouraged. In fact, if uh, if uh, let's say uh, one of uh, one of them actually got a heart uh, for for some reason, I doubt it ever. But uh, let's say let's say he was like, hey, you know what? Let's pay these guys more. We're making record profits. Uh, the shareholders can sue him out of that position. They'll go, why? Why would we do that? In fact, let's let's charge more and pay him less. We like that. That's how it works. It's a capitalist society. Honestly, I actually, when it got to a point in my company, you know, because now, because I get so much work that I actually employ people now, you know, but I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to not become the villain? You know, me, anybody who works for me um, knows exactly what I'm making off of. 
I always show them the bill rate. I show them everything. You know, they know, and I and and all. I always pay them a lot more than the industry, just because I, because since I have my own money, my own, you know, I'm still like I always work. You know, um, I don't need to make money off them. I can, you know, just make sure I make, you know, what's necessary for the little things, which is really nothing, honestly. I really hate it every time the orders go. Oh, uh, you know, oh, I have a lot of overhead. What fucking overhead? Like, like if, if being a subcontractor is like the most fucking difficult, most expensive thing in the world, it's nothing. It's easy. Um, ask your contractors, oh, how much you're bill, you know, how much are you billing for me? They're never gonna tell you that. You know. So the only way to me, for me, the, the only way that this industry will ever get better is if it, if the workforce decides to become a union. Um, but if it doesn't, then that's just gonna be the industry, you know. And I'm gonna be all right. Uh, and you know the company's gonna be all right and everything, you know. Um, another little you know tips here and there is uh, always ask how much your part your friends are making. You know, don't be embarrassed about that. Um, back in the day, they were charging two hundred an hour for our job. Uh, I've charged uh, through a contract house eighty five. You know, uh, I've known people who have paid 120, you know, but obviously those are people who already know what the rates are and they're basically a little more on the special end like that actually, you know, if, uh, uh, that have maybe, you know, sort of like to say fame like me or something like that. But, um, but nowadays, if, uh, you know, if you're not, if you're just another person sort of in the industry, the rate has basically stayed, you know, it's actually even getting lower to like maybe 55 now, you know. Um, so, so uh, to me, if you, uh, you know, that's never going to change because there's no reason for it to, unless, unless the market, the job market, um, you know, is done with, uh, with that and decides to collectively protect itself. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so that's my little spiel on on what the workforce is you know uh and i know this has been a very long video uh but i th but i think it's one of my most important videos because you know i feel i feel like i was obligated to make this because i have the capacity to make this um they and anybody else if you fight with them you lose your, your the well-being of your family and uh and now they ain't shit to me at all and um and i could and i have the luxury of being able to at least inform you guys of what you might be getting into or what you're in um so if this video helps one of you to either avoid this thing or if, if it even sparks enough interest to start a union it would be very worth it um but minimum I can say that I took the time and the effort to be able to tell you guys this because, uh, you know, I care about the people around me and the in my workforce. You know, I miss them. You know, and it really saddens me that uh, that all of them, none of them, are getting pay raises. Yet these companies are making more and more money every quarter. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't want to make too many negative videos like this. Um, and um, but yeah, let me know in, in the comments what you think. Uh, and uh, I hope this helps. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.